Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson, Nomad Capitalist, nomadcapitalist.com, and in this video, want to address a common question about second citizenship that's asked all over the internet, and at the same time dispel some of the uh, most common myths that go on when the media talks about second citizenship. Uh, now, I've been reached out to by The Economist, by uh, Bloomberg, uh, perhaps the biggest one was the BBC, asking about my second citizenship journey, asking about the types of people who want to get second citizenships, and I've always tried to provide really accurate information uh, and information from my own experiences, which I think is very valuable. But it's interesting, whenever I see an article out in the media that talks about citizenship by investment, I notice a lot of facts that are wrong, even when the media source claims to have contacted one of the bigger firms out there that sells a lot of passports to Chinese, Russians, etc. So I want to talk about the, the question, does the United States have a citizenship by investment program? And I got to thinking about this recently because I was reading an article uh, that someone on my team sent me from CNN. And CNN was talking about one of these typical kind of how to get a second passport. Look at all these wealthy people who were getting passports. Who would have thought? And in the article, it talks about Antigua and Dominica and some of the Caribbean programs. Uh, it also wrongly asserts that Kazakhstan and Georgia are considering rolling out their own uh, CBIs. Uh, Georgia has a permanent residence program. Kazakhstan's rolling out residency by investment on a more formal scale. Neither of them uh, has any aspirations for citizenship by investment. Uh, so there are a lot of little errors like that. Uh, some of the pricing was outdated or wrong. But the biggest thing that stood out was when you're looking at the chart that CNN put together, looking at the infographic, they'd have Antigua, they'd have you know Cyprus, countries where you go and you make a donation or you make an investment in real estate and in a matter of months they say here's your passport you're a citizen and it's a done deal and what a lot of these sources do including this cnn article was they list the united states in there now i know what they're doing what they're doing is they're saying the united states has the eb5 program that's one of several programs they have but the eb5 program is the most common uh, it's mostly used by chinese investors there are two tracks. Uh, it seems these days, I don't follow EB-5 that much because I help people get out of the U.S., but uh, the, the track of investing half a million dollars in a distressed area has been so um, bastardized that the million dollar track is no longer really necessary. So basically the investment to get an EB-5 uh, visa and to get a U.S. green card is half a million dollars. And so what a lot of these media sources will say is, oh, the U.S. has citizenship by investment. Uh, I wrote an article a couple of years ago taking CNBC to task when some guy on their panel complained that the U.S. only charged half a million and Malta was getting away with charging, I guess at the time, 800 grand. And he says, you know, why is Malta more expensive than the United States? Well, for one thing, Malta's in the European Union, which is very desirable to some folks. Malta also doesn't have citizenship-based taxation, which is really desirable to people who don't actually want to live in the country of the citizenship. But what, again, everyone gets wrong is, if you go to Malta, you can get a passport in 18 months, and then you can leave. In the United States, you can use this EB-5 program. You can come, you can invest your half million dollars, and then you're required to live in the United States. Once you finally get your green card, which could take, uh, take years, big backlog, you finally get your green card. Now you've got to move to the United States. You can't be gone more than six months at a time. This is not just a citizenship where you can travel the world. You've got to be living in the United States or they're going to yank your green card. Um, and so you've got to do that for the same naturalization period as anyone else. So you could move to the U.S. and get a job. You could, you know, whatever reason you move to the U.S. EB-5, everybody else, as I understand, on the same track. Uh, it's not even like the UK where, you know, the more money you invest, the faster you can get uh, a permanent status. It's just, you're on the track and you've got to live there. And once you've fulfilled the residence conditions, once you've fulfilled the naturalization period, then you can apply for citizenship uh, just as anyone else can in the United States. 
that is not a citizenship by investment program. And, uh, you know, I understand as, as you know, I, I said about a year and a half ago that you're going to start seeing a niching of the investment immigration field. You know, what, what used to be just a couple of islands selling passports, here's your donation, here's your passport, done. Now you're getting into more complicated deals. You're getting some countries saying create jobs, keep them for a certain period of time. You're getting other countries, you know, really getting into some of some more elaborate plans. You have Malta where it takes 18 months roughly to get a passport because there's a, a residence requirement to satisfy the EU. You know, you've got all these different nuances now. So I understand that the term citizenship by investment is being a bit stretched out. Uh, to me, citizenship by investment in its most basic form is you buy real estate, you make a donation, you know, maybe you invest in bonds, you do something that, that you know, they can force you to hold on to for a while, or the cash is gone, they give you a passport immediately, whether it's two, three, four, five months, whatever. Even Malta, okay, let's, let's call that CBI as well. You know, if you have to invest and three years later you get the passport, that's really a residence plan. I mean, there are countries, a shrinking number, but there are countries where in three years you can get a residence permit, you can become a citizen. Some require you to live there. Others do what we call, you know, paper residence. We have a video on that. They don't care if you live there or at least live there that much. So when you start talking about five years, which is I think about what it is for the United States, uh, plus all the waiting time, that's not citizenship by investment. That is residence by investment. Uh, and there are a number of countries that have that. Um, you know, a lot of countries in Europe have that, a lot of Western countries that aren't going to sell their passports, that aren't just going to say, hey, make a donation and, and we'll give you a citizenship. The United States obviously wants people who want to go and live there. They don't want to just be handing out passports like candy, even though who would stop them? Uh, but that's not what they want to do. And so I think it's really important in summary to understand what a citizenship by investment program is. The United States doesn't have one. The UK doesn't have one. Portugal doesn't have one because it takes six years with their golden visa. Spain's golden visa takes 10 years. You've got all these countries people say you can buy citizenship. No, you can fast track your way to residence if you're not the kind of person who can get a job in the country um, or can you know, marry somebody or can you know, migrate through one of the more quote-unquote normal channels. This is a fast tracking uh, for guys like me who, you know, dropped out of a party school at 19 years old and have no technical credentials um, other than starting businesses or whatever. Uh, this is a way for us to fast track our way in. And unlike the business route that, that you or I could perhaps take, uh, you know, with, with EB-5 or any of these other programs, you just put your money down and there's really not much discussion of your CV or your credentials uh, as long as you're clean and as long as you have the money. It's not CBI. So the answer to the United States uh, having a citizenship by investment program is no. Um, and it's a shame that the media continues to perpetrate many of these myths and many of this, uh, much of this misinformation. If you want to find out more about second citizenship, how you can get one, why you might need one, how to live the nomad capitalist lifestyle as a global citizen, subscribe. We've got hundreds of videos that talk about these topics and other similar topics. And if you want to get the more advanced strategies, we have over a thousand articles at nomadcapitalist.com. So check that out too.